In the news this week, sex education guidance in Scotland comes under fire for sidelining parents, the UK Supreme Court rules against two Roman Catholic midwives, and a Christian printer in Northern Ireland supports calls for a conscience clause. Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. New sex education guidance for schools in Scotland marginalises parents, according to campaigners. Nota MP made the comments in the wake of guidelines that encourage teachers to speak to a child's state guardian or named person and not their parents about any well-being concerns. Under the plan named person scheme, all children in Scotland will be assigned such a guardian to monitor their well-being. In the new guidance on relationships, sexual health and parenthood education, the section on confidentiality makes no reference to parents. It says, if there is judged to be a risk to the child's well-being, staff should inform the child's named person. Simon Calvert, Deputy Director for the Christian Institute, said the government guidance was disturbing. It's astonishing that the Scottish Government is saying to teachers, you know, if you have a concern about the well-being of a child, you have to pass on that concern to the named person and not to the child's parents. And actually that includes very serious issues, like if the child has been the victim of underage sexual activity. It, it, all of this is exactly the sort of thing that we've been warning about. And the problem seems to be now that whenever the Scottish Government thinks about children, it thinks about the named person and it doesn't think about their parents at all. And that is, that is sidelining parents, that is overburdening the teachers who have to take on this named person role, and it's also putting children at risk because it's depriving them of their parents' support at some of the most vulnerable times of their lives. The named person plans are currently being challenged by the Christian Institute, along with other organisations and concerned parents at the Court of Session in Edinburgh. The UK's highest court has overturned a decision affecting the case of two Roman Catholic midwives who had previously won the right to avoid supervising staff involved in abortions. The UK Supreme Court made the latest ruling after an appeal by an NHS trust. It said the right to conscientious objection only applies to activities where an individual was taking part in abortion in a hands-on capacity. The midwives said they were saddened and extremely disappointed at the judgment and that their views could have been accommodated with minimal effort. Deliberations will now continue in the ongoing employment tribunal case brought by the midwives. Judge Lady Hale said this will be much better suited to resolving the question of reasonable adjustments. Roman Catholic Archbishop of Glasgow, Philip Tartaglia, said all of society is a poorer, less respectful and less tolerant place as a result of this decision. A Christian printer in Northern Ireland who came under fire for refusing to print a gay magazine is backing the introduction of a conscience clause in the province. Last year, Nick Williamson said he couldn't print a publication called My Gay Zine because its sexually explicit images went against his Christian faith. The case was then referred to the Equality Commission for Northern Ireland. Williamson supports the DUP's conscience clause, which was prompted by the case of Christian bakers who are facing court for declining to produce a pro-gay marriage campaign cake. I think, first of all, that it is tragic that it has come to this in the law in our land that we have to try and get something like this passed. From a point of view of my faith, obviously I think it's a good thing. Comedian Stephen Fry has criticised the DUP's plans on Twitter, claiming that Christians are twisting truth to present themselves as victims. But MLA Paul Given, who is bringing forward the bill, reaffirmed his commitment to protecting freedom of religion. The LGBT campaigners are adopting a tactic of hysterical responses to it in an effort to try to corner people into not giving this the type of rational consideration that it should merit. I'm trying to create a society where everybody's rights can be upheld and balanced. Ultimately, this is discrimination against people of faith. Ofsted inspectors are taking a liberal, intolerant approach to promoting British values, a broadcaster has warned. 
Dennis Sewell, writing for The Spectator, criticised inspections that followed the government issuing new standards requiring schools to actively promote British values. One of those British values is supposed to be tolerance, and implicit in the word tolerance is that one should not have to like or approve what is tolerated. Yet we have already seen a school criticised for not ensuring different sexual orientations are valued, which means something else entirely. Sewell accused Ofsted of bulldozing its way through the faith school sector, asking traumatising questions. He said the head of Ofsted, Sir Michael Wilshaw, should draft guidelines to ensure appropriate inspections are carried out. Meanwhile, the latest primary school league table results show that close to two-thirds of the best performing schools have a religious ethos. That's despite faith schools making up just a third of all primaries in England. The tables show that out of 693 schools where all pupils achieved the government's expected standards, 62% had a religious ethos. These schools include 330 Church of England and 88 Roman Catholic primaries. The Church of England's Chief Education Officer, Nigel Genders, who recently criticised Ofsted's approach to British values, welcomed the results. I'm delighted that Church of England primary schools are leading some of the outstanding practice going on in schools across the country and congratulate the pupils, teachers, support staff, parents and communities who have worked together to secure success. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. On behalf of all the news team, may I wish you a happy Christmas and a peaceful New Year. Until next time, goodbye.